Good afternoon, welcome to our homestead. Can you still buy products made in the USA? That is a huge question I get all the time on my videos, and today we are going to talk in depthly about it. Let's go. Now this is a really complex question to answer and it is not as cut and dry as people think it is. People say all the time, hey, you just gotta buy made in the USA stuff, yeah. Well, <laughs> if you can find it, and if it's what you need to get a job done on your homestead, and we gotta get this question out of the way, because if people just throw out blanket statements like, you have to buy made in the USA stuff, yes, if you can afford it. So many people are struggling right now the things made here are not cheap. Now, I do like to buy things that are a little bit more expensive. Why? Because they last longer and they are cheaper in the long run. We are going to go through a bunch of different products today that I've been able to find that are made in the United States. And then toward the end of the video, I'm going to talk about companies that used to be American owned companies that are not American owned anymore. Let's take these two shirts for example. This shirt is wool. It is made in the USA. It is cut and sewn in the USA. However, the wool comes from Australia. It's made by a company called Woo Roo Wool, and it cost me for just one t-shirt, one wool t-shirt, $55. Now a wool t-shirt will last way longer than a cotton t-shirt. It wicks moisture, it stays drier, it doesn't absorb um, smells, which when you're working out on a homestead, you're wearing cotton all the time, I'm actually throwing away t-shirts because I cannot get the smell out. And yes, I do use vinegar and baking soda to soak them in, but maybe it's just me, I eat a lot of garlic, the smell and stench just permeates it and it's almost unwearable. Wool doesn't do that. Now there's a company up in Montana called Duckworth. You may have heard of them. They have the wool, from the United States. The sheep are in Montana. They cut and sew it here and they produce it here. Everything's done here. A t-shirt, a wool t-shirt is $100. So keep that in mind. If you want to support an all American made company, and that's the only one I found for a wool t-shirt, that's $100 for a t-shirt. This shirt that I have on is a cotton t-shirt. I wear these out to the store or whatever like that. This is made in the USA. It's from a company called Patriot Crew. However, there are some things like the uh, elastane in this or the stretchiness of this shirt, it's not 100% cotton, uh, that come from other places, not in the USA. So you can find 100% American made cotton t-shirts, but they're more expensive. I think this one was like 20 bucks. Maybe a little less, I think maybe about 1750 because I did buy it in a pack. Okay, the belt is by a company called Grip6, made in the USA, everything is made in the USA. So they aren't hyper expensive at all, and it's a great belt. I love this thing. I am not working with any of these companies, okay? So I'll list them the below, but I don't have any affiliation with any of these companies. Look, these jeans are made by Origin. You might have heard it, uh, heard of it, they're up in Maine. This is 100% made in the USA, cotton and elastane, so it's stretchy, and the quality is okay. These jeans were $120 and they are the least expensive all American made jean that I could find. There are other American made jeans companies that are 100% cotton, grown here, woven here, combed here, whatever, all done here, they are expensive. They're two to $250 for a pair of jeans. So I can't afford $250 for a pair of jeans. I went with these. They're all American made. Now there's not that many people able to pay $120 for a pair of jeans. They're gonna go to their nearest you know, mall or whatever, or even like Tractor Supply or Walmart or whatever it is, and get a pair of, say, Wranglers. Wranglers are not made in the United States. So let's talk about boots. You can find boots made in the United States. However, you need to be careful. This company, Danner, is an American company. However, not all of their boots are made in the United States. You have to be careful when looking. These boots have a little tag here with an American flag on it. These are the Cascade uh, style. So remember Cascade. These are made, I think, in Oregon or Washington State. 
But if you go and look at different styles that Danner makes, most of them are made in Vietnam. The price of these are not outrageous compared to other boots. And the only reason I think that Danner is able to do this is because they offset the cost by having their other boots made overseas so that they can hire and keep the staff to make this pair here. Now I want you to take note of that. You are going to find that with many, many companies. Some companies say they're made in the United States. They might have one of their products that is made here in the United States and the rest of their product lines are made overseas. And one of those is DeWalt. This DeWalt impact driver is made here in the United States. It's either Tennessee or North Carolina. I can't remember. I think they do have two plants here in the US. But if you look on the package when you buy a DeWalt, this one, this regular drill, is not made in the United States. I believe it's made in Malaysia. Every single company is going to do this. So you need to pay attention if you wanna buy something made in the USA. But if you need this one for specific jobs and they only make this one in the United States, then what are you gonna do? You have to buy the one made overseas. There are so many different tools here on the property that we use. There is absolutely no way that I could purchase all made in the United States tools. However, I do seek them out. Like I said, these Klein tools that I own are made in the United States. What about this one right here? Toro is an American company and this Toro mower is partially made in the United States. There are some things on here that are made overseas, shipped over, and then there are parts on here that are made overseas, shipped over, and assembled here in the United States. The whole thing is engineered and designed here. The company resides here. So what do you think about that? I get people bent out of shape all the time about things like these solar panels behind me. They're yelling at me to buy American made. Well, these are made in America. However, the company is a foreign company. It's a Turkish company. And if I could find what I needed in terms of solar panels that are 100% American made, and I don't think they exist, maybe Mission Solar, but I'm not sure where their cells are made, then I would buy them. But for now, I will do the best that I possibly can in finding things that employ Americans. Then there are panels like these. These are Solar Ever panels. This company is an American company. The engineers are here. The corporate headquarters is here. Everything is done here except the production of the panels. Those are done in Mexico. Are we all able to find every single product made here in the United States? It's not possible, friends. Now this is a new one for me, friends. This is a Zoller pump, and it says made in the USA of a majority of US content. <laughs> what does that even mean? I don't know. But I needed a new pump for my rainwater tank project, and this was better than the one made in China. There are a few more things. I bought a pair of cowboy boots when I first moved to Texas, my first pair. And I was so excited to get them, but I didn't look at the label, right? I was at a Western uh, store here in Texas, in Houston, that's very famous here in Texas called Cavenders, and I expected things to be made in the United States. Maybe I was naive, but the boots that I bought are Ariat brand. Every one of you probably knows that brand. They are made in China. And then I got a second pair of boots that were also Ariat's made in China. I didn't pay attention. This third pair of boots that I finally got just recently, I paid attention to it. And I sought out American companies that made boots here. And honestly, there aren't many. And they are harder to find. So you have to almost order them online. I looked for a boot called Anderson Bean. They are made here in Texas. We have several Western stores where I live now. And none of them had any Anderson Beans in stock you had to order them online. The pair of boots that I did end up buying were called Double H, and those are made in Pennsylvania. They are made of American cowhide. Everything is made here in the United States, so I will buy always from them in the future. And luckily, friends, those boots weren't more expensive than the ones made in China of a comparable style. So that is one thing that I did find that was around the same price, and I don't know how they do it. Now, I was going to try to wear everything today that was made in the United States, but honestly, I haven't found underwear that's made here in the USA. There's probably some, but I haven't really sought it out too much. 
I'm not in need of any right now. Uh, socks, I thought I was buying socks that were made in the United States of alpaca fiber that came from Peru. However, I was wrong again. They are also knit in Peru. There is a company, however, that does make alpaca socks in the United States from alpacas here in the United States, and they are in my birth state of Michigan. That company is called Cotton Creek Farms, but those socks are $26 a pair. Okay, now I'm gonna go over those companies that everybody thinks are American that aren't anymore. And honestly, there's not many that are anymore. There's a lot in the service industries, but in manufacturing, not many at all. And I'm doing this because honestly, I'm tired. I'm tired of people saying, hey, buy American, hey, buy American, when they probably don't themselves or they don't even realize what they're buying. All right, let's go through this list. First one is Burger King. Do you think that's American owned anymore? It's not. It hasn't been for a long time. It's owned by Unilever, which is a British company. How about 7-Eleven? Iconic American brand, founded here in Texas, in Dallas, actually. Not an American owned company anymore. It has not been American owned since the early 1990s, 91, I believe. It's owned by a Japanese company. How about Trader Joe's? Was an American company? Not anymore, it's German. It's owned by Aldi. Budweiser. We all heard about this one in the news a few years back. Everybody was upset that it was being purchased by a foreign company, a Belgian company, in fact, called InBev. How about Holiday Inn? Iconic American brand. Nope, it's a British company. How about Good Humor Ice Cream and the Popsicle brand in particular? Nope, British company. How about IBM? International Business Machines. I think that was founded here in Texas too. I could be wrong. But their PCs, their PC line is owned by Lenovo, which is a Chinese company. How about Popeye's Fried Chicken? Man, Louisiana, Cajun, nothing more American than that, right? Owned by a Canadian company. How about a high-end company, Tiffany's? Mmm, very nice. Beautiful things, very expensive. Owned by a French company now. Two more companies, Gerber and Purina. Gerber was started in my home state of Michigan in 1927 now owned by a French company. And Purina, owned by the same French company, Nestle. Now I could go on for another hour or more on companies that people think are American that are not American owned anymore. So people think they're buying American with buying you know, things from these companies and they're not. They're actually giving their money to a foreign company. Honestly, friends, the global economy has already been integrated. It was integrated years ago and it's very difficult to buy anything made in the United States. And for those who comment all the time on this channel, who may or may not watch this video, who are yelling at people to buy American, which is maybe from the heart, but not well thought out, take a look at what you have in your home. And if you want, put your money up and try to buy things that are American. Recently, I bought a new kitchen table. The table was made in Thailand. It was sold here in the United States. It's actually solid wood, which was nice. It's a foreign species of wood. Fine, no problem. I looked at an Amish made table that was American hardwood, and it was over five times more expensive at the same store. I could not afford that kitchen table. There is no way that I could pay for that. And I would love to be able to make enough money to do that and to support that Amish company. And there are people out there who can, but it is not me and it is not most Americans. So friends, what can we do? Well, we can do our best and seek out companies like Wuruwo. We can seek out companies like Patriot Crew, which has an affordable t-shirt, but not all the stuff in this t-shirt is made here in the United States. Some of it is. We can save up and purchase jeans like this from a truly American company with truly American materials. I love this country. I want to employ people here. My grandmother worked for Chrysler years ago, which used to be an American company, but is now owned by a foreign, a European company. It hasn't been an American company for a long period of time. On that same note, I did own a Honda Civic in the early 2000s, and that specifically said, on the window sticker that 80% of the parts in that vehicle were made in the United States. 
So most of the revenue is going back to the parent company in Japan, but it's employing American workers and workers at the parts manufacturers in the United States. So, hey man, what are you gonna do? Just do your best for what's in your budget, and if you can support American companies, go for it. I hope that clears everything up. Now go click on this series of videos right here, which is on our greenhouse, which is made here in the United States, in Tennessee. Have a beautiful, blessed day. We'll see you next time. Bye.